Happy Wednesday, everybody. Just getting set up here and waiting a few minutes as usual for everyone to filter into the room. But um, I'm Kat, I'll be hosting this live event today. Um, and I'm in Long Island, New York today. If you wanna let me know in the chat where you are tuning in from, I would love to know uh, who all is here and from where. Um, and what you made this weekend if you were cooking any seafood from Alaska this weekend. It's weird to talk about the weekend on Wednesday. It's like the furthest away you can be from the weekend. But um, yeah, I guess for me, I was doing some recipe testing and I made um, a really delicious poached halibut um, recipe that's up on the blog now with coconut milk. Let me drop the link into the chat because that was super tasty. We're not here to talk about halibut today, but we're talking about it right now while I'm waiting a few minutes for people to get in here. Um, yeah, it was this like baked poached halibut with coconut milk and mango salsa. Let me drop this into the chat. Um, all right. Oh, this is a really long link. Hold on. Yeah, so that's the recipe I made this weekend. Um, it didn't look as pretty as the one on the blog, but uh, oh yeah, Denise, that's sort of what I made. I didn't put turmeric in mine this weekend, but it was along those lines. It was super tasty. Hello, just looking through in the chat. Oh, someone else made halibut with chimichurri. Oh, I like the deconstructed salmon sushi roll idea, Deborah. I love a de deconstructed meal. Um, just going to wait another minute for everyone to get in here so we can start talking about what everyone's here for, spot prawns. And yes, Sherrod, the recording will be available later. Um, it's going to be available right after this on the Facebook homepage um, because we're live streaming it from Facebook as well. Hello, everyone from Facebook. And then um, afterward, I think in the next day or two, we'll email everyone a YouTube link of this event. Hello, everyone. Oh, Dan, you're asking the hard questions, the difference between shrimp and prawns. Um, but I'll get to that in a little bit. And my answer is very inconclusive. So <laughs> that's a spoiler alert. Um, let's wait one more minute, see if we get 100 people in here. Um, we're a few people shy. And in the meantime, let me get my camera lined up. Awesome. Um, all right, well, let's go ahead and get started. It's three minutes after the hour and uh, let me pull up my notes here really quickly. So hello everybody, I'm Kat. I'm uh, from the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team and I'm coming in live from Long Island, New York. Um, today's event is all about wild caught spot prawns from Alaska. If you've never had spot prawns before, they're basically some of the best shrimp you've ever had um, and that you'll ever have in your entire life. Um, no exaggeration here. I'm gonna walk you through how I like to prep them for cooking and also show you like a really quick, easy, very much like basic crowd pleasing way to sh prepare them. Um, and like, probably it'll take me 10 minutes to actually cook it once I get down to cooking. So um, before that, just some housekeeping. Um, captions are available for this at the bottom of your screen if you want to follow along um, without audio or if you need captions to help you follow through. Um, there should be a button that says captions or more with three dots. So you can go ahead and click on that if that's helpful. Um, if you have any questions along the way, um, it's very helpful for me and my team if you put them in the question, the Q&A little icon at the bottom of the screen rather than the chat. Uh, it'll just help us get to the questions better so it doesn't get lost in all the, the fun stuff that's happening on the side here. And uh, lastly, I did mention this a little bit earlier, but if you need to leave before today's event is over or if you want to rewatch this later, we'll send over a link in the next day or two in your inboxes. Um, it'll also be uh, something that you can watch on the Facebook, on our Facebook homepage right after the event is over. It's live streaming there right now. So it'll be immediately available after this um, in case you know you wanna rewatch it right after we get finished hanging out today. So 
Um, there should be a link in the chat uh, just for our Facebook homepage here in a minute. But um, mean, in the meantime, I did say we were uh, joined today by a few of my friends from the company. Um, if they want to hop on camera just to say hi. So um, I have a couple of folks from Wild Alaskan Company here to help moderate the event, and they're going to be answering some of your questions um, along the way as well, or at least fielding them, fielding them to me. So hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everyone, for being here. So um, what we're learning today, or what we're making today, um, we are going to make garlic butter spot prawns. Like I said, very basic. Who doesn't like garlic? Who doesn't like butter? I actually know people who don't like either, but a lot of us like garlic and butter, and it's really, really a nice preparation of spot prawns um, because it's essentially like an Alaskan scampi, um, really something that you could use as an appetizer, serve with like a little bit of crusty bread. It's something you can toss into a pasta, maybe with a little extra olive oil or butter, um, serve it over rice. You can adapt it to, um, you know, toss into a salad, pretty much just a really good, simple, flavorful way to prepare the spot prawns for anything, anything you want. So um, to tell you about the spot prawns, in case you haven't had them before, um, let me grab a pack out of the freezer that I have. So um, it comes in a package like this. It's a resealable bag, although I don't know why it's resealable other than because I want to eat the entire pack every time. So it's not like they're going to go back in here or I'm going to use half of it. I'm going to use all of this. Um, but it comes in a resealable pack. You get eight ounces of spot prawns. Um, they are currently a member special that we have um, that we're offering for a limited time, um, exclusive to members as usual. Um, it's been a minute since we've offered them. So I'm really, really excited to cook with them and to have these in my freezer today. Um, they do come with the shells on. Let me see if I can rip this open. So when they're frozen, get my fingers in here. They come with the shells on. This is, they're covered in like a little bit of an ice glaze. This is something that's applied um, right when they're harvested. Um, the heads will be off, but the shells and tails will be on. So that's what they look like. I'll have some that are thawed here as well that maybe can give you a better look at what they are. Um, but I said this earlier, this, these are some of the best shrimp that you will ever have. And I've had some good shrimp in my day. Um, they are, are a serious upgrade to like your average shrimp. Um, you can use them in place of shrimp in any of your favorite recipes, um, or we have a few recipes on the blog, um, actually more than a few recipes on the blog that utilize these, so um, feel free to scroll through that as well. Um, I will say that spot prawns have actually ruined me for shrimp in general. I really just cannot go back to run-of-the-mill shrimp. They're really sweet. They're a little buttery in flavor. They have a texture that's almost like a little bit lobstery, like delicate, but with like a really nice, like toothy, like robust chew. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but they're very, they're just, they're incredible. So um, I did mention that they're frozen right on the boats after they're harvested. So this keeps them super fresh, super delicious, um, you know, from the boat to your freezer whenever you're ready to cook them. Um, they also don't contain any chemical additives that are sometimes applied to farm shrimp, just like the average shrimp that you might find at a seafood market. Um, there's one additive in particular that some of you might know um, that I want to point out. It's called sodium tripolyphosphate. That's not used on these spot prawns, but it's commonly used on shellfish like scallops, shrimp, um, basically to make those um, seafoods look glossier and more plump. Um, it's more superficial appealing or superficially appealing to consumers who are looking at that and seeing a nice plump shrimp or scallop. Um, but it actually just adds water weight, makes it really hard to get a nice sear if you're trying to get a nice golden crust because there's excess moisture in the shellfish. Um, and also leaves it behind a rubbery texture. So if you've ever had rubbery shrimp before, it might be because it was treated with this additive. Um, it's called STTP or sodium tripolyphosphate. Um, like I said, Alaskan spot prawns, the ones we offer have absolutely none of that. And it's just prawns with like a little bit of an ice layer on top of it to protect it from the elements of your freezer. So um, let's get to doing some prep. Um, the first thing I just wanna talk about is how I usually thaw 
the spot prawns when I get them. Um, you know, one way to do this is to grab your bag of spot prawns and just pour them into a bowl or like a rimmed, a rimmed plate, any sort of container basically where um, they're not going to drip. Um, I do, you can thaw them in the bag if you want to just leave them in here, but I would still put the bag in a bowl because sometimes the seams on these split and it can get really, really messy. Um, spot prawns, they, um, let me show you one here that if I can peel some of this away. Let me move my screen here for a second. So there is something on here that looks like row because it's row. Um, the row is like a yellow orange, um, basically layer of eggs on the belly of some of the spot prawns. So as you're thawing it in the pack or in a bowl like this, some of that pigment from like all that nutrition that's keeping these like eggs and spot prawns really healthy, that's going to melt off into like orange total disaster if it spills anywhere. So keep it in a bowl or a rimmed plate. Um, I will leave it like this in the fridge overnight. Sometimes if I feel like if I'm doing like many packs of these, I'll put it in a colander so, so some of that moisture drains off. But um, honestly, there's not that much liquid on here. What you could also do, which is what I usually do because I don't always plan ahead of time, um, I will quick thaw these. So to this bowl, like right now, I would just cover the spot prawns with water, cold tap water, and leave it on the countertop within like almost like 15 minutes, like 15 or 20 minutes, you can start working with them. You can start taking the shells off, um, you know, depending on if they're like a really, really fat spot prawn or some of the smaller ones that'll come in a pack, um, you know, you can start cooking with them within, like I said, 15 or 20 minutes. So um, they do, uh, you know, they will be sitting in water if that's the case. So you'll just want to make sure you're patting them dry after that. Um, so, you know, do whatever is most convenient for you. Um, I, like I said, I do it like this and it's never been an issue for me. So, um, I have some spot prawns that are ready here. Um, these are probably like on the bigger size. Like I would say that the bigger ones are like thumb sized, maybe if that's a good point of reference. Um, some of the smaller ones can be more like, more like a pinky. So like less fat than this, a little thinner. Um, you know, they are naturally from the sea. We, um, you know, make sure that we're not buying farm stuff that's like, you know, produced in a certain way. So um, the harvest size is always going to be very different. Um, nature is very much a place of randomness. So um, you might get a little bit of a mix of both um, in your pack of spot prawns if you're buying these. So um, to prepare these, you can leave the shells on or off depending on the recipe. I personally like to peel spot prawns um, before I cook with them because they're a little bit more delicate than um, the average shrimp. They're a little trickier to peel. And um, I just find that doing a little bit of work now will save me a lot of um, angst later when I'm looking at a really delicious plate of food. I don't wanna wait to eat it. I wanna like eat it now. So um, what I like to do is peel them first. So let me show you how I do that. Um, maybe it'll be, if you don't mind switching to the other camera, Kristen, I think it'll maybe give people a better view. Um, I'm gonna hit this button, hang on one second. All right, so I just have a couple spot prawns that I haven't peeled yet. Um, like I said, there's usually a bit of row hiding beneath some of the little, I think these are called swimmerettes, which is like a, should be a band name, but um, I like to take a nice set of kitchen shears or any sharp pair of scissors that you don't mind cooking with um, and just cutting them down the back pretty much all the way to the tail. The shells are very delicate, so they cut easily. Um, so you'll see this gives you access to like that vein um, if there is anything in there that you wanna clean out. And then from there, um, the shells don't pull off so readily. What I like to do is kind of get my thumb in between um, the, the meat of the, the prawn and then the shell and like roll it out of there, like getting it out of a little sleeping bag. And then I'll pinch the tail and just give it a gentle pull. Um, so that's how I prep spot prawns. It's very important to note that these are spiny. They're different than your average shrimp. So if you're going this way on the shrimp, it's not going to poke you. If you're going the opposite direction, um, you're probably going to get a little stab along the way. So 
um, try to work your way down the shrimp toward the tail. Um, so I'm gonna just set that little shell aside. Let me do that one more time with this prawn. You'll see again, there's some row in there. Um, what I will say before I cut into this is if you are planning to cook these with the shell on, um, I would suggest taking the row out, just grab a spoon and give this a little scrape and you'll be able to pull out a lot of that row. Um, and you can just discard that because when you are cooking this with the row on, it's totally fine. It just sometimes can make things look a little bit cloudy. Um, and you know, it's totally up to you depending on what, what, on what you wanna do, but it should scrape out. And you'll see that the, um, like I said, the pigment from that row is very orange. So that's why you wanna thaw it in a bowl. Um, so let me just go ahead and cut this again. Like I said, be careful with the spines underneath. They're not really up top, but uh, beneath the prawn. And then you're gonna get your finger in between the prawn and the shell and just roll it out of there. Um, I would personally not worry so much if there's a little bit of meat left while you're doing this um, because what I like to do is save, these are just some of the shells from earlier. Let me move these to a different plate. I save these shells for um, to make stock. So spot prawn stock, It'll be something that you can uh, use to flavor sauces, chowders, just a million different things. You don't have to make this into stock now. Actually, you know, when I said earlier, I don't know why these bags are resealable. Well, guess what? What I do is I put the shells into the bag and then I set the bag right back in the freezer for another day. Um, I usually save up like two bags worth of, or two um, packs worth of, shells before I make stock because that'll make you about a quart. So yeah, that'll just go right back into the freezer like that. Um, and to be honest, I have about four or five packs in the freezer right now because I'm a little delinquent on making stock. But um, I think that is, oh, so let me show you actually what they look like afterward. Like I said, there's a lot of pigment in the prawns. So they're gonna have the ones that we've been getting this these, this season have had a very like orange red hue. Some of them are even like a little bit darker. Um, that is totally normal. Um, and you'll see that they're like a little more delicate than shrimp. Um, some of it looks like it's a little ripped up. Don't worry about that. They're gonna cook up perfectly. Everything's gonna firm up and all of that delicateness is gonna come out, just gonna be a really lovely texture once they're cooked. So um, any questions before I move on to cooking? I'm gonna wash my hands too really quickly because they're very crowny. Yes, one, one question. Do you generally come across a vein in most or some of the prawns? I haven't, um, not anything that I, you know, even think about compared to, um, you know, other shrimp that I've purchased in the past. Um, with these, they tend to be very clean. Um, you know, I don't think I even pulled anything out of the vein earlier when I was going through these. You know, you can always take a peek. Sometimes there's like a little bit of something in there, but it's really like there's this one has a little bit of a vein in there. But, um, you know, for the most part, like I, I don't find these to be a very like dirty um, prawn or shrimp. So, yeah, there's that. Um, great. And then um, one question that came in, how long is it safe to keep the prawns in the freezer? Um, you can keep the prawns in the freezer indefinitely as long as they're you know frozen stored properly there's no fluctuations in temperature that make it you know something that's like not safe for eating um so just like an average normally running freezer um they'll stay fresh in there indefinitely and same with the shells um you know if you're reserving the shells which i highly recommend you do um they will last in the freezer indefinitely um and if you end up making spot prawn stock which is what we're gonna do next week um, at the live event, um, that can stay good in your freezer indefinitely. That being said, I would recommend using these, any of these things within three months of receiving them, um, just because you know your fridge isn't a commercial fridge, it will deteriorate over time like anything you put in your freezer. So um, three months maximum, if you wanna have the, or the spot prawns at like their finest, most glorious state of being, so. Um, one question, um, just 
uh, you mentioned discarding the row. And I think uh, we had a couple of questions come in about that. I think it's important to note that we don't recommend an eating any wild Alaskan company seafood raw, just as a food safety um, thing. But, you know, uh, so just wanted to answer that one live as well. Um, another question, is it better to cook the shell on or off? Um, Vivian has found moisture shells on, um, like I guess moisture uh, um, moisture <laughs> spot prawns while you're cooking with the shells on. And then if you're doing, if you're cooking a shrimp cocktail, um, what's better, shells on or off? So we actually have a recipe on the blog. Sorry for a moment. I'm just gonna throw these other spot prawns into the fridge, um, the frozen ones that is. So I think that, well, let me answer the question that I was gonna answer first. Spot prawn cocktail, we have a recipe for that on the blog that is um, with the shells off. Um, and there's so much flavor in the prawn that you're not gonna be missing out on all the juices that are in there. And eventually, you know, you're going to repurpose um, the spot prawns for a stock. Um, I actually had developed this recipe and I tried poaching the prawns in spot prawn stock, but it didn't make a big difference. It wasn't, it, it was basically just delicious without the shells poached in like a, like a very simple flavored water. Um, generally speaking, I would say yes, if you're cooking spot prawns or any sort of like shelled crustacean like this with the shells on, it does tend to stay moister, but these cook so quickly. They're so delicate that, um, for me, it, the juice is not worth the squeeze, if you will. I'd rather get the shells off now, use those in elements for other things, and then enjoy the spot prawns as they are. But if you do want to cook with the spot prawn shells on, or if that's specifically what the recipe is calling for, what I would suggest is getting a pair of kitchen shears, snipping them down the backs before you cook them. And that way you already have it sort of partway open so that you can get into them easier later. Um, like I said, the shells are very delicate. Um, it will be a little bit tricky to eat afterward if you cook them with the shells on. Not impossible. I just personally prefer not to do it that way, but just giving them a little head start by sniff snipping them beforehand goes a long way. So that's my recommendation to you for that. Great. Why don't we move on to the cooking demo, but please keep the questions coming. We love, we love to answer your questions. Yes. Um, so we are going to make, like I said, garlic butter spot prawns. Um, the ingredients that I need for this are pretty straightforward. Of course, we've got our spot prawns that are peeled. Um, they're padded dry. I have them on a little paper towel to soak up any of the excess moisture from those other two that I just peeled. Um, we've got a little bit of butter that I'm gonna drop into the pan here. Let me actually go ahead and get this started. Um, got a little bit of butter and olive oil. So I like doing a mix of olive oil and butter if I'm sauteing something and I want buttery flavor. The olive oil sort of protects the butter from burning um, because it has a higher smoke point than butter. Butter itself, if you cook it at you know medium, medium to high temperatures, tends to burn. Um, if you're doing it for, if you have it on the heat for too long. So those are the, you know, essential ingredients, garlic, butter, spot prawns, well, the garlic. I have a bunch of um, finely diced shallots and some thinly sliced garlic in here. Um, they're just in the same bowl because they're gonna go in at the same time. Um, you could do minced garlic if you like. Um, when you mince garlic, the flavor is gonna be a little bit stronger. If you're slicing them thinner so that there's less surface area, it's going to be a little bit sweeter and more of a mellow flavor. So I personally like doing a uh, sliced garlic for this because the spot from flavor is so delicate. I want to, you know, enhance that and not cover it up um, as much as I like garlic. Um, I'm going to add a little dash of chili flake for a little bit of heat. They're not going to be spicy. It's just going to bring out some of those, um, you know, like appetizing qualities that make your mouth water. Um, I have, I'm supposed to have white wine, but I didn't have one open. So sometimes if that happens to me, um, I just use like a little bit of tasty water. This is water with soy sauce in it. Sometimes I'll do water with a little bit of um, miso whisked in. Um, if I have stock, I'll use stock. Um, these are not gonna be as acidic as something like white wine, but I have some lemon for later. So 
Um, that's what I'm using to make this recipe. On the blog, it's uh, it calls for white wine, but just keep in mind that that's something that you can do um, if you're ever needing a little bit of liquid to make a pan sauce. Um, it won't be exactly the same, but it's still going to be good. So this is melting up. Once that little circle of butter is gone, I'll add the prawns. Um, I've also got some parsley chopped up, uh, some lemon, a lemon wedge from yesterday that I can squeeze into here. And then once this is all cooked, um, I'm going to add it to a couple of things. I have some cooked orzo on the side that was also left over from yesterday that I think will be really, really good with this, the spot prawns and some of this buttery sauce. Um, and as a gluten-free option, I also have um, some like carrots that I just saw, or not carrots, corn that I sauteed up really quickly beforehand and some like fresh tomatoes. This will be really good for summer. So those are both gonna be a little home for the spot prawns once they're cooked. So um, all you need for this, other than the ingredients is a skillet. Uh, something about this size is good and um, something to stir the prawns around with. So this looks like it's getting hot enough. I see that the butter has melted into these little um, particles. So let's drop these in here. All right, I'm gonna raise the heat because they're not sizzling yet, but they should start sizzling pretty soon. So these are only gonna take about maybe a minute or two per side to cook because they are so delicate and these are pretty small um, compared to, you know, if you're getting like a jumbo size of anything. So um, within a minute or two, you're gonna start to see that these will curl up from, you know, a flatter, a flatter um, shape that they are now to like more of a C shape. You don't wanna go all the way to a C shape because that tends to mean that they're overdone overcooked. Um, like all the juices in there have basically left the prawn and um, they're like distorting the shape of it. So once they get to like a nice like sort of gentle curl, that's when I know they'll be finished. So those are going to cook right now. Um, and then after these are at least like most of the way cooked, I'm going to add some of these aromatics to um, the pan here. So oh, there we go. That's the sizzle I'm looking for. Ideally, you want to add these to the pan once it's sizzling, but I rushed this a little bit, so they're going to be fine. Um, you can let them cook uh, without stirring them around, or if you feel like stirring them around just so that you feel like you're doing something, like I am, then that's fine too. All right, so you'll see that, like, for instance, this one's starting to curl up into that C shape, so I know that one's done or done enough to take out of the pan, because we're going to toss these into the sauce later, where they'll finish cooking. This smells so good, um, because that's just how hot bubbling butter smells when it has spot prawns in them. So I'm going to see if I can flip this guy over here. All right, I can probably take these all out at the same time. This little baby one ended up cooking pretty quickly. All right, so now we have spot prawns that are partly cooked. Um, you know, they're if you're cooking them all the way through in a pan like this, it's usually not going to take you more than, you know, three or four minutes max. To this, I'm going to add that garlic and shallot, the little bowl of it that I had. Um, and cook these until they're no longer raw. Um, maybe two or three minutes until they become a little translucent, like some of those sugars in there start to break down. They become a little sweeter. Um, and again, this smells incredible. All right. In the meantime, um, anyone have any questions about what I'm doing um, in terms of measurements, like uh, I, I didn't go through my measurements for this on camera, but I had probably about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half worth of garlic, like one clove um, for this and maybe a tablespoon of shallots. This is for just like an eight ounce pack of spot prawns. I think the recipe on the blog is for two packs because um, this goes really quickly once you make it. So it's nice to have some backup. Um, 
And uh, I think that's all I really put in here other than a pinch of chili flakes. All right, so that is looking like it's getting nice and soft. I'm starting to pick up a little bit of color on the shallots. So I'm not looking for like fried here. So this is a great time to add in some of that, like I said, tasty liquid that I had. So just give that a stir. It'll bubble up because you're adding um, basically water to um, oil. So you want to make sure that you're adding enough that it's not going to sputter everywhere, but it'll cook down a little bit until until it gets into this like saucy, viscous uh, consistency. So to that, I'm actually going to add in some lemon juice. I'm going to need more lemon juice than that. Let me cut open this lemon here really quickly. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it. Like, I think maybe a quarter of a lemon or half a lemon's worth of juice, if you like something a little more acidic, is about the right amount for this. Um, then I'm going to add the spot prawns back to the pan. There's going to be some juices that come out of this as it sits, so definitely add those back in because those are tasty. And then to that, I haven't seasoned this yet. Let me turn the heat off. Let's give these a little toss here. I'm going to just sprinkle on a little bit of salt. Doesn't need so much because there's a lot of flavor happening in here. Some pepper. And then let me stir in some of that parsley that I have. I like adding the parsley in last because it's going to sort of break down a little bit with the heat of the pan, but it's not going to um, cook uh, per se. It'll get rid of that raw flavor and texture, but still be super, super fresh. So these delicious prawns are going to go right onto that plate of orzo that I had. And I definitely want to get some of the juices in there. Um, and as I promised, I have a plate of corn and tomatoes that I'm going to add these to as well. I'll give you the, the beauty shot of this here in just a moment. Let me just get this pan out of, out of the way. All right. So um, first and foremost, we got this really lovely plate of orzo. If you wanted to add a little more of a lemon flavor to this, you could definitely take the zest of a lemon and sprinkle that over um, over top of this right now to finish it would be super delicious. Um, the other alternative is corn, just some cherry tomatoes. I have this dressed with like some, some olive oil and lemon juice already. So that's going to be like a really nice light summery salad. Well, it's got butter in it, so it's not like too light, but it's light enough to call a salad. So um, if you want to switch to the other camera, that would be good because I think this one got all steamy while I was cooking. Um, so yeah, now the moment of truth. Does this taste any good? I'm going to say that it tastes amazing. So um, let me take a quick bite of the orzo. Perfect. That was so, so quick and easy to make. Um, the orzo was just plain orzo, but because there were so many juices in the pan, some olive oil, some butter, all those flavors were already building or built into the spot prawns. This over just something like plain rice, plain pasta, you might need to add a little bit more lemon or a little bit more olive oil um, just to get things coated. But otherwise, that was just like a super, super easy meal. So, and just for the sake of being fair, I'm going to take a bite of this other dish too. Let me get a small one so I'm not chewing for too long. Yeah, so like I said, this was just corn that I had in a skillet, a little bit of garlic, olive oil, um, cooked it so it got a little toasty, and then threw in some fresh cherry tomatoes, basically like a no recipe recipe for summer if you have the good tomatoes and corn. Also, excellent. The sweet corn with the spot prawns, it just like enhances all the sweetness and um, that's within the prawns already. 
super, super tasty. This is not a recipe up on the blog, but like I said, no recipe, recipe, just mix it with any corn, any tomato, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil, and you're, you're good to go. So mm. I'll finish chewing, but in the meantime, does anyone have any questions about um, what we just made together? Absolutely. Watch me yeah. <laughs> can we, can we get another beauty shot of those plates? I just want to see them really close up in the camera. Totally. So we have spot mm. ponds, um, over corn and some cherry tomatoes. And the spot prawns retain that sort of like orange color um, that you saw when I was peeling them. And then spot prawn over orzo, just so, so tasty, so delicious. Mm. Yum. Okay, a couple of questions. Are any of your products um, processed overseas? Um, none of them are processed overseas. Um, they're harvested in Alaska and then they're processed in the States, um, in Washington, the Pacific Northwest, never processed abroad. They don't ever leave the country. Great, great, great. Uh, another question, um, about the spot prawn, uh, the spot prawn stock. So Amber usually cooks the spot prawns in the shell, um, and then peels before she adds them to her dish. Um, but she was wondering if she could use those shells, the cooked shells to make stock. I would say that at that point, most of the flavor and juices in them is going to be gone. Um, so I wouldn't bother using the shells again to make a stock. Um, this is something that I do do with um, some of the, the crab that we offer. Um, you know, for instance, um, the snap and eat Dungeness crab, it was a special a few weeks ago that we had. Um, those crabs are already pre-cooked, um, but there's a lot of like briny juices and little bits of meat that's left in the shells that have a lot of flavor to offer. So for crab shells, I will save those and make them into stock. It's not as um, robust of a stock as spot prawn um, stock is when you're cooking the spot prawns or when you're using raw spot prawn shells to make a stock, but it still adds like a little of that like briny flavor of the sea when you're using crab shells. If you're using spot prawn shells that are already cooked, you're not going to get that much flavor out of them. Great. Thank you. Um, do you ever, I'm, this is a pointed question because I know the answer to it. Um, do you ever make the spot prawns with grits? I do in fact make the spot prawns with gr grits. Um, it is again, the best grits you'll ever have. Well, the grits, you know, I know grits are very personal to um, people who have recipes that they've used that have been passed down or, but the spot prawns on the grits, it's going to be the best grits you have ever had. Um, and we're actually having an event next Wednesday, same time, same place. Well, I might be in a different place, but I'll be, it'll be with me on the computer. So same place, your computer, um, where I'm going to show you how to make spot prawn and grits. So definitely tune into that. Um, and, you know, I'm using a recipe that one of our chefs developed, but um, you're more than welcome to follow along and use whatever recipe you like for grits. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun one. I make that recipe almost, uh, you know, every time I can get spot prawns, I make it at least once, if not more than that. So great. Okay. Um, one other question so far. Um, <clears throat> what it's, it seemed to some of our viewers that maybe you had cooked the spot prawns for quite a while. Would you say they cook faster or slower than like farm shrimp that you might be getting, um, either frozen or unfrozen at the, at the, at your local store? Um, I would say that they cook a little bit faster. And I think a lot of that is because at least the, the impression when you're cooking something from a grocery store, there's a lot of moisture in like a conventional grocery store shrimp because of that additive that I mentioned earlier. So when you're cooking something like shrimp that's been treated with STTP, also known as sodium tripolyphosphate, it needs to cook down a longer to look cooked um, because there's so much excess moisture in them. With these spot prawns, because there's nothing in them, um, you know, they, they cook like, just like that. Um, 
And like I said, you'll notice when you'll know, you'll know they're cooked when they start to go from that flat shape to starting to curl. That's usually when you try to take them off. If they're into a C shape, C shape, they're going to be, you know, getting to a very overcooked state, but these are really delicious. Um, I think that the texture holds up, even if they're on the stove a little bit too long, like that first one that I pulled off the pan, that one was like curled up like right away. Um, but you know, if you like your spot prawns to be a little bit more like on the slightly underdone side, you're more than welcome to pull them off a little bit earlier. Just like keep an eye on like when it starts to turn opaque, when they start to curl a little bit, that's like a good time to pull them off. They do taste different than regular shrimp, Deborah. They're amazing. So great. Um, you can always keep them on, but you can't uncook them once you've overcooked them. And that's true for all wild caught seafood. Um, okay. I think that's all of our questions for now. Um, thanks for being such, um, an engaged crowd. Um, all right. Well, if there are no more questions for me today, uh, I just want to remind you that we're talking about spot prawns because they are a member special that we're currently running. Um, if you've never had them before, they really genuinely are worth trying. Um, they're so easy to cook, a little tricky to peel, but easy to cook very easy to love and super adaptable to any recipe because they're just inherently delicious. So um, definitely consider adding a pack to your next box. Actually two packs, I think is the special. Add more than two packs because you're gonna love these. Um, if you're not a member yet, um, we do have a different special offer for you. If you become a member today and use the code LIVE25, you'll get $25, $25 off your first box of amazing fish. Um, from Wild Alaskan Company, and you get access to exclusive member specials like the spot prawns that we're sharing with you today. Um, and just easy, it's really easy to sign up. You can join on the homepage. You can reach out to one of our member experience specialists to help like talk you through anything you need help with. Um, but in the meantime, thanks to everyone who's here with me today for hanging out with me in the kitchen. Um, if you're into spot prawns, if you add a couple packs to your next box, definitely definitely consider tuning in to next week's live event because like I said, we'll be making spot prawns and grits. Um, I should do that in the morning, right? You should wake up and like make grits with me for breakfast. Um, so it's a epitome of comfort food, but until then, live wild. Thanks for coming.